All right, folks, welcome back to Anatomy of Algebra. I'm Chris Holden. This is episode three, Searching for a Cubic Formula. This is section two of Plug and Chug, uh, meaning that in previous episodes or previous sections, we introduced the idea of uh, a cubic po polynomial. We looked up the cubic formula on Wikipedia and tried to use it. Once we started doing the arithmetic, we ran into some trouble but we eventually found our way out, at least for the one cubic we used last time. So what I wanted to do in this section is to see how lucky we got. So to start with, I wrote down the basic strategy that came out of what we did last time. So this is plug and chug, the cubic version, sort of the anal analog of what you do with the quadratic formula in, in school usually. So we've got Cardano's formula, and what we're gonna do is with our cubic, we're gonna get as far as we can with Cardano's formula until the arithmetic starts getting really hard. And then we're gonna end up with some sort of mess underneath a cube root, and we're just gonna hope that whatever's under there is already a cube so that we can take its cube root. That makes it easy if that works out. And then once we make that guess, we actually can constrain those possibilities by doing some basic algebra and hopefully get the benefit of, of some uh, gains from factoring. In the last one, we uh, found that uh, some strange expression made up of whole numbers being multiplied and added together had to be 10. And so that reduced it to a very small number of possibilities to work out. And it was easy enough to guess which one it was, which gave us the thing that was being cubed, which let us get the answer from Cardano's formula. So this time I wanted to try it with a different example. And I guess the first question you might ask is, given my example, why would I choose this one? So, uh, I don't know, you could, you could stop and try and work through this without me for a minute and then come back and see what I do. That would probably be the ideal thing. I guess if you're kicked back with a beverage though, we may as well just keep watching. So again, we're, we're gonna use Cardano's formula first. X equals, and I can't, so I'll have to pause the video and look it up probably. All right, so minus Q, and I've already written this one in standard form. So minus Q is positive two, two over two plus the square root of Q squared. So four over four plus P cubed, P is three over 27 or also three cubed. Now are you beginning to see why I picked this example? I hate fractions almost as much as you do. So this is gonna be one plus the square root of one plus one. So, or I'm sorry, this one is minus. All right, so there's a cube root of one plus the square root of two plus the cube root of one minus the square root of two. And that's where we get to the deadlock of Cardano's formula. We've got nothing else we can do except move on to step two. Things get nice and easy if this happens to be a cube because then we can take its cube root. I want to find z so that z cubed equals one plus root two, and the kind of no, and the kind of constraints I get on z, at least here and now, we might want to think about whether there's a way to to enlarge that speculative question. But whole numbers plus whole numbers times, in this case, the square root of two. So it would be the same kind of number. It would cube and then, you know, through the, all this foiling process, maybe some of the stuff goes away, some of the other stuff doesn't. Um, and hopefully that would drop out and give us one plus root two. All right, so if z equals a plus b root two, then I can figure out what z cubed is. And I hope since last episode, you've practiced your Pascal's triangle a little bit, because that'll let you write out what this is again a cubed, and then I'm gonna get three a squared b root twos. So if you're imagining sort of this three part foiling, I take the a from one, I take the a from one, I take the b in the second one, or in the third one. And then depending on how I do that, there's three different ways to do that, and that gives me all three of those. I also likewise get three, um, a, B squares, except then I also get a root 2 times a root 2, so I get times 2, 
And then finally, I get 2 times 2 times root 2 times root 2 times root 2, which is 2, and then another root 2, and 3 Bs. That's what Pascal's triangle gives me, or just a whole bunch of foiling if you want to do it that way. The next step is I want to compare this number to the number I should get, I hope to get when I cube it. And so I'm going to combine these parts. This is going to be a cubed plus 6 ab squared. And those are the parts that don't have any root 3s in them. And then this other one is going to be 3a squared b plus 2b cubed times the square root of 2. And I know that this part is going to have to be come out to be 1. So I know that if this is going to work out, I'm going to need that to be 1. I'm going to go ahead and do the factoring I did last time to see if it helps me out. Okay, and I'll leave the other one for just a little bit later. But for now, I've got this equation here. And this is a little bit trickier than last time, because remember, a and b, in my dreams at least, are whole numbers. I don't know what it would be if they're not whole numbers. If they're numbers like pi and stuff, we've got a whole other problem on our hands. They won't be pi. That's another story though. Um, but the only way for this to come out to be 1 is if that's 1 and if this is 1. Now b could be 0 and that would make that 1, but then there's no way if the part of the number that has root 2 in it isn't there, if b is 0, there's no way I'm going to get a part with root 2 in it later. There's no way that b can be 0. Uh, one of the possibilities we can think of and we didn't think of last time is that unlike geometers and algebraists in the 1500s, we can feel free to use negative numbers here. But this isn't going to help us. I don't see any way to choose whole numbers to make this out to be 1. Again, unless you use 0, and 0 isn't going to be a helpful choice there. As far as I can tell, unlike the example we tried last time, for this particular cubic, we get just as stuck at ever at Cardano's formula. There's not a nice way out in a way to sort of see through what this makes. We can, of course, try and put it into Google. Why don't you go ahead and try and put this number into Google and see if it turns out into something nice? Uh, well, I guess it doesn't this time, right? So what do we make of this? You know, I can think of some other cubics, some simpler cubics, cubics which we wouldn't feel like we needed a formula for, that also nevertheless don't come out to have a nice answer. One of the most famous cubics in all of history, maybe we'll get a chance to talk about it by itself sometime, is one of the easiest ones to write down. And that cubic is this one, x cubed equals 2. What's the solution to that? Easily enough, x is the cube root of 2. So that number isn't going to simplify ever. But we might ask, well, what is that number? How do we know that that is a number? In algebra class, you're allowed to write down signs that look like this and call them numbers, but is that a number? What gives something the right to be a number? If we believe that that is a number and it ends up somewhere on the number line, how can we find out around how big that number is? In other words, can we find a decimal or a fraction approximation for that number? Now, I want to continue on with the cubic, so I don't want to get too sidetracked with the number like this today, but I do want it to sort of to put a pin in it and to have that pin be poking at us that a lot of times when we're answering these questions it's not just the algebra that allows us to answer it's some assumptions that we're already making about what numbers are and how we deal with them and at some point we're going to have to go ahead and pay that bill until next time keep thinking about what kinds of numbers are coming up in the algebra that you're thinking about and what you know about what kind of numbers they might be or what questions you have about what kinds of numbers and how to deal with them that, that you can come up with. In the next section, I want to take one more section to look at an example of a cubic to plug it into Cardano's formula and see what happens. We've seen an example of something that works out nicely, and, and if we work through it, we can see how it works out nicely. We've seen this time an example of something that doesn't work out, and in the next example, we'll see an example of something that works out, but only if we're willing to believe in something impossible. So until then, this has been Anatomy of Algebra, I'll see you next time.